And joining me now for more on the promising vaccine news is one of the doctors leading the Pfizer trial. Dr. Onyema Obuwago is the Associate Professor of Medicine and Infectious Disease Specialist at Yale. Dr. Obuwago, thanks so much for being here. You know, the number most often discussed was that a vaccine would hopefully be at least 50% effective. Now you have both Pfizer and Moderna reporting that their vaccines are more than 90% percent effective. How were you able to reach that high level of efficacy and what does that mean for the process moving forward? Yeah, first of all, thank you for having me, Diane. I think, you know, those of us involved in the trials are really super excited by the results that were really quite unexpected. Um, you know, we quite expected that the vaccines should at least have more than 50 percent efficacy, which is what the FDA said as far. But it's just so heartwarming that vaccines have been so effective. And it's, it's great because, you know, having a very effective vaccine would help us achieve the so-called herd immunity, which would mean that if we have enough people who receive the vaccine and are protected against the virus, this could really be the beginning of the end of the pandemic. Obviously, um, there are insufficient doses for everyone, like has been mentioned already, and we're hoping that as we start to phase in the vaccine and, and also to have more doses in the first quarter of 2021, that that might mean um, really the pandemic ending. And, uh, you know, those words just change the game so much, and it's been a while, maybe at all, since we've heard them. Uh, but we know we're not there yet. Uh, Pfizer's launching a pilot delivery program in four states. Uh, one of the big challenges is that the vaccine needs to be stored at negative 94 degrees. So how do you do that while shipping? Yeah, so, um, you know, it's, re it's recognized that the cold chain is an issue, especially for the, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. But, you know, these have been known way ahead of time. And so preparations are being made both on the government end through Operation Warp Speed and their distribution networks, as well as Pfizer, who is also developing their own independent distribution plan. And of course, that would include capacity to have vaccines stored at those low temperatures. We're also learning that the vaccines want defrosted last in refrigerators, for example, the Moderna vaccine up to 30 days and a little uh, about a week or less for, for the Pfizer vaccine, which is exciting. So that at least creates opportunities to factor these storage requirements in with the yeah, we uh, there's so much hope out there with this news. And, and again, it couldn't come at a moment too soon when we're hitting another surge in this virus. And I know you're also part of a community of ambassadors uh, working to assure Americans that vaccine research was done safely. Just the other day, someone mentioned to me, I remember thalidomide. So what's your message to people who might be hesitant to get the vaccine even after it's approved? Yeah, so, you know, while we've been celebrating a lot about having an effective vaccine, and, and frankly, you know, we've run out of emojis in the scientific community <laughs> to celebrate um, the good news, but tempering that optimism and excitement is that there's quite a lot of vaccines to be expressed. Um, and I've also experienced that as a frontline uh, researcher and clinician, that even healthcare workers in the community um, tend to express that uh, hesitancy for vaccines. So a lot of work really needs to be done to reassure the community, and I hope I'm doing so also during a new program to, to really reassure the public that even though the vaccine trials have proceeded at an unprecedented pace, but they're being, being done carefully, thoughtfully, with the right amount of um, oversight, and that if a vaccine receives emergency use authorization by the FDA, that it's passed through all the safety checks and the efficacy numbers are real, and that should really reassure the public. All right, Dr. Onyema Obuagu, we appreciate your time and we appreciate your work. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me, Diane. It's our pleasure. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.